As China threatens U.S. forces from over a thousand miles away with fearsome weapons like the DF-17 and DF-21D missiles, the idea of airborne carriers unleashing swarms of UAVs offers a game-changing solution. American aircraft carriers are the largest, most advanced, and most dominant carriers on the planet. What would it mean if these massive beasts broke the laws of physics and took off into the sky? These carriers would keep American forces beyond the enemy's strike zone, while their drones fly deeper, faster, and deadlier on hostile territory, ensuring the mission succeeds without risking lives. Rear Admiral William Moffat believed that the Navy shouldn't just dominate the seas they sail, but also the skies above them. For everyone else, it looked like the Rear Admiral was trying to put the Air Force out of a job. But Rear Admiral William Moffat was onto something, something he would never see. On April 4, 1933, almost a century ago, one of the deadliest airship disasters in history occurred. It involved USS Akron, the Rear Admiral's prize jewel, a 785-foot-long rigid airship, the largest airship of its time, and just 19 feet short of the largest airship ever. At approximately 12.30 a.m. on this fateful day, the Akron was flying at an altitude of about 1,000 feet near Bernadette Light, New Jersey. The massive airship had taken off the day before for a routine calibration flight along the New England coastline. The mission involved testing radio direction finding equipment and conducting maneuvers. In a few hours, the massive airship would encounter a storm that its weather scouting equipment didn't detect. This storm pushed the Akron into the Atlantic Ocean, first damaging its tail fin and ultimately sinking the airship. A nearby airship spotted the crash and rushed to save the victims of the crash. Of 76 people, they were only able to save four. One of these four later died due to exposure. Therefore, there were only three survivors of this crash. 73 people lost their lives, including the Akron's commander, Frank C. McCord, and Rear Admiral William Moffat. The Rear Admiral's death dealt a heavy blow to the U.S. Navy's quest for flying aircraft carriers. So when USS Akron's twin, USS Macon, crashed in the Pacific Ocean two years after the Akron crashed, so too did the U.S. Navy's attempts at an aircraft carrier that took off. That was it. It was over. The decades that followed saw military planes grow stronger, faster, larger, higher flying, longer flying, more lethal, more everything. But there was always still the gap of what could be. If planes themselves were now so advanced, what could be of aircraft carriers in the skies if the Navy continued to pursue them? The aircraft carriers on the seas are definitely mighty successful and are genuinely regarded as the main battle adversary to overcome for any rival the U.S. goes to battle with. U.S. Navy sea-based aircraft carriers are by far the most impressive in the world. Led by USS Gerald Ford and consisting of 10 Nimitz-class aircraft carriers, all nuclear-powered, these massive floating bases can carry more aircraft than the air forces of over half the world has. If they left the seas and took off into the skies, they could be even more formidable. Faster, wider field of view, more agile movements make Nick Fury marvel. Access to places not connected by water. With such a vehicle, the world would become smaller and more accessible to the U.S. Navy. The U.S. Navy has had to say no to these capabilities on offer for over nine decades, but no more. The no stays in the past because it's now a yes in the present. As Russia, China, and other U.S. rivals continue to grow militarily, U.S. military generals have had to look one another in the eyes and go, maybe flying aircraft carriers isn't a bad idea after all. The need for something new, something more, something that could change the world, it's dire. As a result, not only the U.S. Navy, but also the Air Force and the agencies that develop revolutionary technologies for the U.S. military have opened their hearts, minds, and checkbooks to the idea of a flying aircraft carrier. Thanks to modern technologies, the idea is taking off and tremendous progress, particularly in two programs, which include 
the Rapid Dragon program. The Rapid Dragon program is an interesting one. It spits fire. The Khaleesi would be proud. Okay, not fire in that sense, but it does spit fire and in the process. It transforms regular military cargo aircraft such as the Lockheed C-130 Hercules and Boeing C-17 Globemaster III into aircraft carriers. The aircraft launched from these regular military cargo aircraft wouldn't be the typical manned fighter though as is seen on USS Gerald Ford and the likes. Instead, the aircraft launch would be flying munitions, munitions that fly like any aircraft, but on arriving at their targets, detonate. The munition of choice for this program includes the AGM-158 for surface targets, AGM-158C for naval targets, and the Joint Direct Attack Munition, JDAM. These were already production-ready munitions beside the Rapid Dragon program. The military cargo aircraft involved in the program are also production-ready besides the program. This is what makes the Rapid Dragon program unique and inexpensive. It mainly revolves around a palletized and disposable weapons module to be airdropped in order to deploy the flying munitions from the unmodified cargo planes. The program is a project by the U.S. Air Force Research Lab in Lockheed Barton. Each weapons module, called a deployment box, can carry between six and nine munitions depending on the particular munition chosen. The munition chosen for any particular mission depends on a host of factors such as the fortification of the target or the distance. The JDAM can strike targets 50 miles away. The AGM-158C can strike targets over 500 miles away. And the AGM-158 is ideal for targets over 575 miles away. Once the munition is chosen and ready to go, the system operates by airdropping pallets via a rare cargo ramp. Stabilized by parachutes, the munitions are then vertically dropped from the module. They deploy their wings, ignite their engines, and navigate to targets using pre-programmed or updated targeting data. Once at their targets, boom, they explode and destroy said targets. This effectively transforms the regular large aircraft carrying these munitions into bombers. If these munitions are switched with other types of drones, they could perfect other types of tasks. If a bird asks what type of task, it would be the type that aircraft take off from USS Gerald Ford to execute. Therefore, the C-130 and C-17 would now function like the USS Gerald Ford, like an aircraft carrier but from the sky, a flying aircraft carrier. The Gremlins Program Gremlins already have a reputation of being mischievous creatures that know how to destroy things, but they've been fictional. The U.S. Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, aims to bring them to life in the Gremlins program. Like the Rapid Dragon program, the Gremlins program will use largely regular aircraft to launch smaller aircraft. However, the Gremlins program goes further, much further. The program will develop new, reusable, low-cost, unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, that can be launched and recovered by larger aircraft, including cargo aircraft and bombers. UAVs under development are known as the Dynetics X-61 Gremlins. Dynetics, the American Applied Science and Information Technology Company, headquartered in Huntsville, Alabama, was one of four companies to be awarded a Phase 1 contract for the Gremlins program in 2016. By April 2018, the company had won the Phase 3 contract of the program and was consequently selected as the contractor to manufacture the Gremlins. Each Dynatech Gremlin is a 14-foot-long aircraft with a wingspan of over 11 feet and a gross weight of 1,500 pounds. Powered by a single Williams F-107 turbofan engine, each Gremlin can reach a top speed of 350 miles and strike targets up to 350 miles away. A single Gremlin can carry a variety of payloads, including electro-optical sensors, infrared imagers, electronic warfare systems, and weapons. Therefore, the Gremlins can perform the wildest array of tasks, from reconnaissance to strike. The Gremlins are designed to be compatible with existing launch and ground support equipment, making them budget-friendly to manufacture, deploy, and maintain. The Gremlins are also self-autonomous. 
allowing a controller either in the airborne aircraft carrier that launched them or on the ground to control them. A single controller can control up to eight X-61 Gremlins at a time. This gives one pilot out of the line of fire to control an entire mini army of highly capable and lethal aircraft. The Gremlins are the ultimate force multiplier. In October 2021, DARPA announced that a C-130 Hercules cargo plane had successfully recovered an X-61A from midair for the first time, a major milestone for the program. The recovery process of a Gremlin involves the Gremlin approaching its carrier from below, latching onto a towed cable and being reeled into the aircraft like aerial refueling, but for drone retrieval. The test validated autonomous formation flying, safety features, and aerodynamic interactions. The recovered Gremlin was then ready for its next flight in only 24 hours, as opposed to days and weeks for manned aircraft. The Gremlin is the force multiplier that's always ready for action in an ever-intensifying battlefield that's gold. By 2021, the Gremlins program continued to refine its technology, focusing on scaling swarm operations and enhanced payload capabilities. It could redefine how the U.S. military conducts air operations, offering a cost-effective, adaptable way to dominate conflicts in the future. Rear Admiral William Moffat had a vision of flying aircraft carriers dominating the skies like traditional carriers dominated the seas. He believed they would be the ultimate weapons in the sky. Nine decades later, the U.S. military can boldly say he was right. They're working on his vision and making progress. Rear Admiral William Moffat would be proud. And he would be even prouder if you give this video a like and subscribe to this channel. So do that now for Rear Admiral William Moffat and thanks for watching.